but they're science, right? I mean, beliefs only go as far as then all of a sudden they're science. Like we can actually put things to the test and get to the truth. You know, I mean, there's just all sorts of nutritional nonsense out there. And that's why I started nutritionfacts.org because I'm not interested in opinions or beliefs or when it comes to something as life and death important as what to feed yourself and your families, if there's any decision to be made based on evidence, it should be that. And so that's why I just present the evidence. Okay, here's the actual studies. Here's, you know, they randomize people in two groups, half ate this diet, half ate this diet, then they'll find out what happened. You don't have to just like dream up, well, I bet this would happen if you, you know, or I bet this is what we ate two million years ago. It's like, look, we can put it to the test right now with actual human beings. Let's do it. Yeah, and you can find all kinds of information like that on your website, uh, nutritionfacts.org. Your videos are incredible. Uh, last one, a plant-based diet is only good for some people, not all people, especially not all stages of life. Well, so uh, the oldest and largest uh, association of nutrition professionals in the world would disagree, right? This is the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. They, if you look at their uh, 2017, you know, uh, you know, position paper on plant-based diets, very explicit that strictly plant-based diets are appropriate for all stages of life, pregnancy, infancy on through old age and in fact has benefits in terms of reducing chronic disease risk which is number one um a cause of death and death and disability and so i mean that's how you sell people crazy supplements and tests and things you should be like oh it's all about personalized nutrition yeah this may this may diet may be good for that person but for you like we're going to give you some like special you know your genes say you should eat this you're blood type or you're you're a capricorn so you should eat whatever so you should eat lots of corn you know obviously it's in the name <laughs> right but that's a way to sell you stuff i mean like you go to a zoo right gorillas eat gorilla food like you know uh, every animal has their own kind of natural diet right. and it's not like well there's some gorillas that eat, you know so, i mean no i mean gorillas that, that's just their biology right now we do have these gene polymorphisms some people um, metabolize caffeine differently, for example, and so may have, you know, uh, there's kind of slight variations, but beyond those kind of minor um, things, um, basically, I mean, the same basic principles as to healthy eating and healthy living are the same for everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, well, it definitely works for athletes, too. I mean, I can attest for that, and a lot of people that I, uh, you know, a lot of my colleagues um, are... Have you heard about the new uh, Game Changers documentary? Oh, my God, it's going to rock your world! <laughs> So this is the best plant-based documentary in human history. Um, just to premiered at Sundance uh, last month. Um, and uh, it'll be hitting theaters presumably sometime this year. And so it's about the athletic performance. And it's just amazing. I saw an early kind of pre-release copy. And it's just, it's just going to blow your socks off. Fantastic. Um, so now I want to move on to your, your new book, your cookbook. How, oh. not, how Not to Die Cookbook. Uh, how did this come about and why is it a must in people's homes? The original How Not to Die, the first half was, you know, 15 chefs each and 15 leading causes of death. Right. About the world diet, may play preventing, arresting, reversing each of our top 15 killers. I didn't want it to just be a reference book with the thousands of scientific citations. I wanted to be a practical guy on, you know, putting this into, you know, like uh, into practice, like, you know, making day-to-day -day grocery store type decisions. So I sent in the second half of the book, I sent my my recommendations around a, a daily dozen checklist of all the things I encourage people to fit in their daily routine, like greens every day, the healthiest vegetables, berries every day, the healthiest fruits, uh, you know, tips from the ground, flax seeds, car teaspoon, turmeric, the best beverages, but how much exercise to get, like, um, just in hopes of kind of inspiring people to fit some of the healthiest of healthy foods into their daily routine. Um, and so I think people, and there's a free app on iPhone, Android, you can download it and track your progress and stuff. And I was like, okay, I thought that was done with the outside. I did the why, I did the how, let's move on. But people were still like, no, 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 I want more. Like, you can't just tell me to eat kale. You need to find a way to make it delicious, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, look, Google it. Like, there's like literally millions of recipes online, like, like why would it and so yeah so when the publisher says you gotta come out with a cookbook i'm like who does people buy cookbooks these days <laughs> the you want. um boy was i wrong boy people love cookbooks <laughs> um, and so uh, so but basically i'm like all right if i'm gonna do a cookbook it's gonna be unique right, right? 
Um, and so I didn't want just every recipe to be healthy. I wanted every ingredient of every recipe to be healthy. So every ingredient, a green light food, which is in my traffic light system, means whole plant food. So, um, you know, how do you make something salty without salt? How do you make something sweet without sugar? Well, that was, the, you know, that's what we, that was, we went in with this, the challenge. And uh, so far, I've been getting some great feedback. Um, the New York Times review book called their favorite cookbook of the season. Nice. Like, it's, it's like crazy blowing nice. up. Um, uh, actually started out the first week higher on the New York Times bestseller list than How Not to Die. Wow. Um, of course, I have another year's worth of followers and stuff. But yeah. Um, so, yeah, very excited. It's doing really well. It's beautiful. It came out it really nice. I don't know if you had a chance to see it. But I did. Yeah, you like got a coffee it. table book, right? I mean, it's yeah. just you got it's so pretty. Pictures, I don't yeah. want to, like, bring it in the kitchen and get, like, dirty. <laughs> get you know? food on it. <laughs> right? Yeah, you got, I mean, you got sauces and spice blends, glazes. I mean, you guys really went all out with this. And Yeah, we, yeah, we, 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 had, a, we had a blast. So I think every one of my books now is going to have a companion cookbook. So nice. I'm working on the next book now, and we're going to do a cookbook after that as well. That's, a, that's incredible. G give me one of your favorite meals from that book, just one. Oh, you know, I love the uh, the roasted cauliflower dishes. Mm. Um, so for people that don't like vegetables, uh, roasting vegetables, whether we're talking about Brussels sprouts or, or cauliflower, I mean, it completely changes the entire, like it doesn't taste like cauliflower at all. Like right. it's a whole new entity, right? right? Um, you know, the, it kind of caramelizes and it's just like the texture changes, everything changes. Like, like a roasted red pepper, right? I mean, right. it's just completely different. It's different flavors. It's like, it's complete transformation. And so we did a lot of kind of roasted vegetables. And so I think those recipes are good for people that think they don't like vegetables, but you just gotta find a way to prepare them really nice. So that, yeah, so those are, those are because I know, look, we gotta eat cruciferous vegetables. These broccoli family vegetables, but okay, how do you make them delicious? Well, when it comes to cauliflower, roasting is the same. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I eat Brussels sprouts almost every day. I love those little things. Oh, just, wow. That's, uh, that, that's a, uh, that's a habit we should all go, we should all uh, sign up for. Them. Yeah, my kids love them too. Um, talk for a second about the best way to get information from you and the best place to find your books, all of which I will be linking down below in the description for easy access. Cool. They can go to nutritionfacts.org. Um, and uh, so free, uh, you know, everything's free. No corporate sponsorship, strictly non commercial, no ads. Um, not selling anything, just put it up as public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother. New videos and articles every day on the latest in evidence based nutrition. Check it out. <laughs> well, thank you once again, Dr. Gregor, for appearing here on Guilt Free TV and for the incredible work that you do around the world to promote true health and wellness. I really appreciate you. Have a wonderful, uh, have a wonderful evening. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Dr. Gregor. Yeah.